Hi everyone and welcome to our lecture today which is on the introduction to the project appraisal process. My name is Danielle Fopp and I'll be taking you through the question how do we appraise a project? Today's lecture will provide an overview of the project appraisal process and this course will take you through the various approaches and techniques which can be used when developing a project appraisal. The client or audience of your appraisal will likely vary with each project. For this reason, it is important the target audience needs for each appraisal and the project are clearly and properly understood before commencing. This also links back to the critical success factors of the project. Your client may include a banker, consultant, government, etc. And they will all have their unique critical factors that they would like you to appraise in your project appraisal. In this course, we will discuss some of the major appraisal processes. However, this is not an exhaustive list. And for each project, there will be a different range of appraisal factors, which are of key importance. The appraisal phase serves to filter the project. So we have the project brief incoming from the client and utilising multiple appraisal techniques, which may differ per project, we end up with a project appraisal report. And this report contains recommendations for the clients to consider. The client will then use this project appraisal report to decide if the project will be launched or if they would rather avoid an expensive waste of resources or a failure to deliver the service or desired client outcomes. As we will see in this course, there is a multitude of appraisal techniques available for the project. For example, a project might be appraised from a technical perspective, an economic, commercial, political or environmental perspective. And in this course, we'll delve into these in a greater depth. But let's give an example for one. So if I were to have a construction project and legally appraise it, well, what does that mean? Well, a legal appraisal would be conducted to determine whether the project satisfies the legal issues related to, for example, land acquisition, title deed, or environmental clearance. But why do we use multiple appraisal techniques? Well, a practitioner within the field of project appraisal will draw upon his or her combined knowledge of engineering, project management and decision modelling, as we've seen. They'll use this along with the client's critical success factors and the project objectives to pick the suitable appraisal tools. Alternatively, the client may provide the tools or the techniques or the concepts which they would like to be appraised for the project. Now appraisal techniques in this course will be divided into those which are economic based, for example, financial appraisal, and those which are non-economic based, and they're results orientated techniques. As a general rule, the costs and returns will be projected for a given project for the life of the project. The net present value, for example, will illustrate the percentage of recovery of the capital cost within its project period. The internal rate of return will then demonstrate the percentage returns of the individual project over a fixed period of time. Other factors, such as annual return, will be calculated once a cost estimate for construction has been estimated. Now, once these items have been calculated individually, they are brought together to assess the financial viability of the project. Still following along, we'll be diving into those concepts in greater depth in the next lectures. So we know that these techniques can be grouped into the economic and the non-economic techniques broadly. These do overlap and intertwine, however broadly we can separate the two. Now the financial or economic appraisal is designed to determine whether the financial costs and returns are properly estimated. These would have been roughly completed in the feasibility stage or prior. 
But now it's the time of the project appraiser to determine and provide a recommendation on whether the project is financially viable. And they will use cost benefit analysis, MPV, IRR, and so on to do this. And we will be going through these in the following lectures. Now an economic appraisal might ask the question, how does the project contribute to the sector? How does it contribute to the funding request? Can that funding request be justified? Will the project result in savings and revenue or will it result in loss and debt? And these tools allow the client to determine if an investment has a satisfactory return for them. Now it's important to keep in mind that the project appraiser provides a recommendation. Ultimately, it is the client's choice and the client's determination of whether that investment has a satisfactory return for them and for the company. Now an economic deliverable might be a cost benefit analysis, which is a report which provides an economic assessment of the costs and benefits of the project in order to determine if the project is economically worthwhile. And then we move over to the non-economic appraisal techniques. And these are results oriented appraisal techniques. They focus on identifying and predicting risks and their impacts on delivering the project's key outcomes. And that's also linked to the client's success factors. Now, fo the following are some examples, which often build upon the feasibility study. And like we said previously, if the feasibility study has been done really well, the project appraisal will flow on from this quite simply. So you might look at, for example, environmental, and the client might be wanting to know, are there any environmental approvals which may impact the project's ability to proceed? Are there any projected detrimental environmental impacts? They might look at water, air, land, sound, and geographically. The legal we touched on previously, are there any legal issues regarding land acquisition, for example? Then they might look at staffing, management, social benefits. Ultimately, we are asking, does the proposed project align with the project goals and objectives? These will all link in to what we call the business case, which brings it all together. And this is the conclusion of your appraisal report and may also be called the recommendation. Uh, and it's a complete statement documenting the rationale behind and justification for the project. It brings all of the evidence from the appraisal together, which the client will then use as the basis for their decision. It's really important that your appraisal report provides a complete picture of all arguments both for and against the project. Now, as we have seen already, the appraisal of the project occurs with a relationship to studies which have already occurred and decisions which will be made in the future. Every company and organisation will have a slightly different methodology and process which they use for the project appraisal and they may have varying requirements around deliverables. However, this course aims to provide you with the skills to approach these varying methodologies with confidence. The names and specific timelines of each project may change. However, the overall systems and skills which you will learn in this course will enable you to adapt and utilise your company's specific processes with ease. And as we can see on screen, we have some key phases from an example client. And this has been adapted from the NRA project appraisal guidelines. And this specific client requires a project brief cost analysis, project appraisal report, business case and post project review. And they require these at different stages throughout the contract or throughout the project timeline. This table may look different depending on your client and depending on their needs. But again, it's really important in that first kickoff meeting or when you're signing the contract for the actual task, that you are very clear on what deliverables the client foresees as being required. 